Pictures of the um of the doctored um of the doctored inauguration photos. The you know, we've talked about this before, but it but it bears repeating there the there's a story out now that and, and we more or less knew this at the time, but the difference is, is that we now know for sure that it was a government photographer who who doctored the inaugural photographs to make the crowd appear uh, bigger following a personal intervention from the president. Now, here's the thing. And particularly at the time that we heard it, it was sort of, it was funny and it's pathetic, right? And it's fun to laugh at the pathetic man, the sad, sad man who needs to have a bigger crowd there. But it is very easy for us, and by us I mean people who pay attention to politics and are not necessarily as sort of susceptible uh, to these type of things, um, to underestimate how bad this is, <laughs> right? Like, based on just on that call that uh, that Ronald Reagan uh, uh, made in, in, in that interview about mesmerism, you know, there are millions upon millions of people in this country who, if you told them the president doctored, on his orders, doctored the official photographs of the inauguration, would look at you like you were crazy. And they would look and they would see this photograph up there with Sean Spicer, fortunately has been you know relegated to uh the 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 margins and they would say look there it is you're crazy and there's a reason why despots do stuff like this and it's because they're crazy and they're power hungry and they're also you know part of it might be uh, an awareness that these things tell certain pictures and create certain realities. And part of it may be just a certain sense of insecurity and whatnot. I mean, uh, certainly I know that Castro was quite aware in the uh, in the attempts for his revolution that uh, the Cuban people were largely illiterate in the importance of images and photography in, in spreading political messages. Uh, obviously, that's not the exactly the dynamic here but this is dangerous creepy ass stuff that makes a big difference to millions of americans and that's that should scare people at least i mean scare them enough. it's very easy i just feel like it's very easy for us to dismiss it right like we talk about it. We laugh and this and that. We but, laugh to keep from crying, though. Well, yes, that's true. But I also think that sometimes we laugh because it's funny. I don't laugh pathetic, to keep from crying. Right? That's like, a lie. It's they're not news. mutually exclusive. Fake news, fake right. news, fake. But I think we just news. need to just sort of keep in the forefront of our minds like this is very, very problematic. It has the potential for being very, very problematic. That's like any cult, right? Like, I'm sure Scientology has a crazy word L. Ron Hubbard came up with that means fake news. Well, it's also oh, showing... Well, without doubt. You're backing the fascists into a corner because they wouldn't normally like to be doing things this obvious and blatant, but they w they're willing to do it. And then what happens when, you know... I, I think that, like, there is no backing them in the corner over stuff like this. That's what makes it so... Because like, it, it doesn't matter that half the country knows that this lunatic was feeling so defensive that he ordered our government apparatus. To, it doesn't matter to them because they don't need the entire country. Right. Yep. That's the scariest part is when they know that, you know, they're lying and they don't care. It's true. They know the margin of popular support they need and they don't care about anything more than that. And yeah. it's an ever shrinking margin with the court chipping away at voting rights. <laughs> 